Hello, it is September 26, 2013, and today we're going to be installing the Visual Studio Express C Sharp for the web. We're going to do that from the web platform installer, which we installed in a previous video. So the place to find that, I believe, is in products, and then it's right there at the top. We want to go ahead and add that to our install, and then click install. This will begin the installation process, as you can see. So we need to accept this. If we decline, it won't work. And you can see that there is a whole lot of stuff that it's going to install as requirements for Visual Studio Express 2012 for the web. All of these things <clears throat> allow Visual Studio Express to do all the stuff that it needs to do to develop web applications. All right, let's click Accept and go ahead and get that started. It's going to begin the download process. This can take some time, so you just have to be patient while it finishes. All right, while we are waiting for this to finish installing, <clears throat> I'll go over the requirements for Visual Studio. Uh, if you are on a client operating system, uh, so regular Windows that you may go buy from the store, it requires Windows 7 Service Pack 1 and above. If you are on a server machine, then <clears throat> that server is required to be Windows Server 2008 R2 Service Pack 1 and above. Visual Studio is an IDE, an integrated development environment. The full version of Visual Studio allows for programming in several different languages to include C Sharp, Visual Basic, and C++. Uh, it is also equipped to handle HTML and JavaScript. Uh, Visual Studio is, I feel, a great editor for code projects. It includes uh, several extremely important features <clears throat> such as syntax highlighting or the ability to highlight your code's keywords and different features. Uh, it includes IntelliSense for the Visual Basic, C Sharp, JavaScript, and HTML languages. Uh, IntelliSense is kind of like code completion. So you start typing some code, and before you're done typing the name of a class, it might know the name of some classes that you could be typing, and it will suggest those to you. If the one that you want is the first one suggested, you can hit Tab, Space, or Enter and that will cause that to be completed in the text that you were typing. So it'll go ahead and finish typing it for you, and then it will have you ready to begin the next part of your code. Uh, depending on what button you hit, it could add a space. I believe, actually, I believe tab, space, and enter all add a space after the, the IntelliSense code completion. If you were to hit the period button, then it will open up a new IntelliSense drop-down that will allow you to choose from the properties and methods or functions on the object that you just finished typing. Visual Studio also supports code formatting. Uh, there is a keystroke that you can hit which is Control K D. You hold down Control, hit K and then D and this will format all of the code in the file that you are currently working in. This is wonderful for when you import HTML or you are trying to make some sense of some poorly formatted C Sharp, Visual Basic, or C++, or especially JavaScript. Visual Studio is highly extensible. There is actually an option in, uh, I believe if you go to Tools and then Manage Extensions, you can add several tools that third parties have developed that integrate with Visual Studio and allow for extending some of its features. You can increase its ability to highlight your code. You can add refactoring tools such as ReSharper or Code Rush or uh, Telerik's Just Code. You can add testing tools like InCrunch or Mighty Moose, uh, which is also uh, Continuous Tests as another name for Mighty Moose. Once inside a project, uh, for instance a web project, Visual Studio supports a package manager called NuGet, which will allow you to get other people's code projects and import them into your code project so that you can take advantage of the hard work that they have done 
without you having to do the hard work in your own project. Something to note about Visual Studio Express editions are that in editions previous to 2012, you were unable to include two projects in the same solution. This meant that you could not have a unit test project, at least not an MS test unit test project, inside your solution. And if you wanted to write unit tests, you would have to do that in a separate solution. In Visual Studio Express 2012, we should have the ability to have unit tests in our solution alongside of our main project. All right, so the installation and configuration says it's finished. I'm going to go ahead and click Finish, and then we're going to wait a second. Okay, I don't want to install any of that. We'll go ahead and exit out of that, and let's find out if it actually installed and will run. I do not see it here. So what if I type the start of Visual Studio? I'm not seeing anything. What's up with that? Do I need to restart or something? Here we go. V, uh, VS Express for web. That's why I didn't find it earlier. Let's go ahead and we will pin that to the taskbar. We'll escape out. There it is right there. Nice big green icon. So if you can't find it, you would want to search for VS Express for web. That seems to be the solution. Let's run it and see if it actually works. Uh, Visual Studio can take a little bit of time to actually load. It has uh, It's not exactly lightweight software. All right, so it says we need a product key. And this product key will expire in 30 days. Registration is required. So let's say we register online. Wait. Oh, I think you have to... Okay. If you don't register online, then Visual Studio Express will stop working after a 30-day period. But we're going to go ahead and register online. There's no reason not to. Okay. Uh, I am going to choose personal. I would not like to hear, and I don't want to hear from partners either, so continue. All right, are you creating the software for distribution, online use, and click OK. Just wait for this to finish. OK, there is our product key. So we'll just go ahead and grab the product key. We'll copy it, minimize this just in case. Come over here, and we will paste it in. Uh, there's Control V. Now we can click Next. Uh, just say yes to any of the warnings that pop up uh, for Visual Studio. Uh, I promise it's OK to install and say yes. It's perfectly fine to give Visual Studio permission. Product key applied, so we should be ready to go. Now it's going to finish loading Visual Studio. And again, this can take a little bit of time. Visual Studio is not a lightweight application. It can get a little power hungry. All right, Visual Studio has successfully loaded. This is the start page. As you can see, it does have a test option up here, so I do believe that I was correct and they did add it in. I mentioned a extensions and updates. I believe I called it extension manager, but it's extensions and updates. If you click on that, feel free to explore all the options. You click on line, and as you can see, there is just a ton of stuff. Uh, it says five pages. There's probably more than five pages. Uh, a lot of these are really nice to to uh, to look at. Some of them are extremely helpful. I will talk about the ones that I use at another time. <clears throat> so I'm going to go ahead and install all these updates. Uh, you should do the same thing. This update wants me to shut down Visual Studio, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. And then I will click Continue. And I agree. Click install. Again, say yes to any of the boxes that pop up. All right, setup is now finished, and it wants me to restart the computer. 
we're going to hold off on that because I'm going to finish installing the other piece of Visual Studio that had an update ready. Okay. So we'll go back to extensions and updates. Go oh well. Go to updates. And there is one in the Visual Studio Gallery. It is the NuGet package manager that I mentioned earlier. We definitely want to get the newest version of that to ensure that we are getting the most up-to-date NuGet packages. This one should be a much smaller install. Again, click yes. Alright, so we need to check that this is the version we want to install this update for. And we can go ahead and click install. <clears throat> All right, and it's finished. So that was pretty simple. Uh, this update would require us to restart Visual Studio. I'm going to just say close because we actually need to restart the computer due because of the last update. Now I'm going to close Visual Studio. I'm going to restart my computer, and I will see you next time. Thank you, and goodbye.